Hello, welcome to the Dirt of Pleasure. Here in the Enchanted Kingdom of Hermione. And I am your host for today, as usual. The Lord Chamberlain of the Enchanted Kingdom is at gun. Watching the Lusitania get torpedoed. And also watching the Britannic hit a mine. But we're here mostly to talk about today, where you'll notice I'm wired for sound. Uh, they decided they needed to follow me around with a heart monitor, so they stuck one on me, sent me home with it. And this, of course, meant that despite my isolation, I was able to go hit the thrift stores. Once again, thrift store man. And I did pretty good today. I got a bunch to talk to you about. I went and hit, I hit four separate businesses. And just strangely, well, the last one wasn't really a thrift store, so it doesn't count. But the first one I went to was the Salvation Army. The Salvation Army. See, these are two bucks. Mm. Two bucks is about the most I'll pay. So it better be okay stuff. Well, luckily, they don't check to see if they're doubles. So this one was two bucks, but it's a two CD box. And I'm a sucker for this stuff. It's Judy Collins. Pretty much everything you need by her. On Electra, of course. And, you know, what's it got? Well, it's got everything. Who knows if the time goes? Chelsea morning. Does it have? It does have Farewell to Tawathi. And, of course, it does have Amazing Grace. Uh, oh, BMG Direct put this out. I didn't know that. Anyway, this is, um, uh, she's good. I mean, you know, for two bucks, I'll own everything of hers I need to own. And um, I'd be shocked if somebody doesn't ask me if I have this. She's even naked on the cover. Can you look at that? <laughs> Steve Stills. There you go. That was his girlfriend for a while. He wrote Sweet Judy Blue Eyes for her. Next up, we have a series that I collect, and I don't I have no idea how many there are in this series. But it's I believe it's just called British Composers. There you go, EMI. Everything I've found on this is great. This is Glindborn Wind Serenades. I'm not really sure what that means. I by the way, I haven't looked at any of these other than to just say, oh, I'll buy it. Glindborn, eh? Uh, Jonathan Dove, Nigel Osborne, Jonathan Harvey, Stephen Oliver, and Robert Saxton, all of whom are still alive. In other words, this is 20th century British uh, music that you can probably whistle. There, oh, here we go. Uh, doesn't really say... Glenborn Festival Society. Anyway, I've never heard of any of these pieces. I can't believe they're not great. Members of the London Philharmonic, directed by Andrew Perrett. And I can't believe this is not going to be another great addition to this series. Ironically, it's made in Germany. Oh, well. Um, now we get into some weird stuff. Now, this is sealed. I haven't even opened it. Chinska? Chinska Redai. I know nothing about this young lady. All I needed to know is she's playing the harpsichord, and I see the link, the names F. Couperin, J. S. Bach, and A. Forcare, all of whom I love. Now, you can tell that this is... I'm not exactly sure what this is exactly. Creative Commons. Hippocampus to... So it doesn't really have a label. What's more, because it's sealed, I can't, there's no list of what's on it. Mercifully, they, now they did sell it to me be, by telling me who, whose pieces are on it. So let's take a look. I'm going to guess F. Coupron. What's the bet that the Mysterious Battlements, or whatever it's called, is on this? Which is the Francois Coupron's biggest hit. And La Barricade Mysterio. How did I know that? Of course it's on here. And the Fenacoy doing uh, pieces for 
my French is not very good. Uh, little young lady holds a diploma in music for the Bella Bartok Academy of Music. Nancy Argenta invited her to join the faculty at the Victoria Conservatory of Music. Interesting. She's a member of the Victoria Baroque Players. I'm ashamed that I don't know of her because I should. I never get to see the Baroque Players in Victoria because, at least up until lately, I've always had to work on those nights. But, uh, and of course, now we have COVID, so that kind of puts a paid to that. At any rate, this... <laughs> I think it's funny that whoever put this together thought it was far more important to put production notes on the back. Jim Anderson is the head piano technician at the University of Victoria and the official harpsichord technician for the Early Music Society of the Islands. Okay, good. The equipment used comprised a pair of Nylant XO microphones to close mic the harpsichord and a pair of AKGC 414 XLS microphones in a bloom line arrangement to record the ambient sound. I have a pair of AKG 414s. They are very good mics. Uh, no, 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 no. But yeah, and so you get lots of technical blag, but they don't tell you what's on it until you open the shrink wrap and look inside of it. Um, I can't believe this is bad. Certainly, I have lots of versions of La Barricade Mysterious, and we will be putting up up against those to gauge its worth. But I can't believe that's not worth two bucks. Then we got a weird one here, Elayu Inbal, who's an interesting conductor doing Ravel. And uh, again, I'm not sure how this could be bad. Um, strangely, the tray card is upside down, but the spine is correct. Anyways, this is 88, 1988 digital uh, Denon. I wonder how many bit digital it is at any rate. You have a fairly typical selection. Memeloi, uh, Apotheos, La Tombeau de Couperin, another Couperin reference. Uh, the Pavan pour un enfant de Thune. What is it? The prelude of the afternoon of a fawn, is it? Uh, anyway, National Orchestra de France. Uh, done by Radio France. This is good. I like French music played by French orchestras. And then the real shocker. This one, I haven't even looked this up. I don't know anything about it. I know it's going to be okay. But we, here we have, on a label I have never heard of, Four Star. Never heard of Four Star. 1983. We have Joseph Jarman of the Art Ensemble of Chicago. i never heard of this CD. And what do we have here? Well, he writes... Every, no, he doesn't write everything on here. There's a Charlie Parker... And a Sidney Bechet song. Mm. Joseph Jarman on soprano, tenor, C flute, B flute. Famadou Don Moy, also from the Art Ensemble on percussion. Fred Hopkins on bass and Jerry Allen on piano and synth, it says here. Vanguard Recording Studio, 1983. KEM Enterprises. Never heard of it. How could it not be good? It's called Inheritance. Well, Great, so that was 10 bucks well spent. Then I went and crossed the street. Now, the good news. Across the street, the CDs are only $1. Do you think the guys across the street would notice that? So here we have a CD that was originally sold at Charlie's Place for $9.99. I got it for the princely sum of a dollar. Yes, KMFDM, which apparently does not stand for Kill Motherfucking Depeche Mode, sadly. And, I mean, what's not to like about an album that has a song on it called The Unrestrained Use of Excessive Force? Starts with a song called Kickin' Ass. Now, it's been so long since I've listened to these guys. I remember I kind of like them. Of their type of music, which is a type of music I'm not overly fond of. What do you want to call it? Industrial? You know, it's on wax tracks. Most wax track stuff. I can kind of take it or leave it. But I remember these guys, and this would have been a long time ago. And what year is this from? Oh, they're not going to tell me this, sneaky bastards. Really, there's no dates anywhere. Fascinating, Captain. Are there notes? Mm, no. 
Nope, they're not going to say. Huh. Anyway, this, I do believe, is their first record. And if I remember correctly, the further back you go with these guys, the better they get. A dollar. I'll buy it. Then we have friends lay hard on the Merry Widow. Now, I need another version of the Merry Widow. Like I need a whole man, but this is a new one. It was a buck. The Glindeborn Chorus. Somebody's big on the Glindeborn here. This is from a different thrift store, so it makes you wonder. Felicity Lott, who I've got some stuff by. 1994 live. Yeah, you know, sure. And then we have, of course, more early music. Samatini on Naxos. Now, of course, Naxos is one of these labels I love to hate. I, I just think they look cheap. Now, never mind the fact that this is a good CD, almost certainly. Recorded by Italians in Italy. Uh, and it was a buck. So, you know, for a buck, I'll buy it. Uh, Factor Fin Spa, SPA. I almost certainly don't have these. Although, watch me look and I'll be there. Anyway, for a dollar, I'll buy Sacred Cantatas by Sammartini. Um, and then this, now this is funny. This is the second copy of this I found in the last few months. This is, um, Maddie Pryor from Steel Ice Band and the Carnival Band, and they're on Sadisk. Now, Sadisk is a cool British sort of classical label. This, um, is more British folk than it's anything. And it's really good, and I know this because I've already got it, and I'm going to give this to somebody because I can't believe I don't know anybody that would love a CD in the mail called Sing Lustily and with Good Courage. So, there you go. Message to the wise. Sing Lustily and with Good Courage. And then, as a delight, I didn't even look at the see if this is in, it's in perfect shape. Nobody's played this. Here's a CD by a band called the Maroons. No, not the Maroons you're thinking of. This was a local band. I recorded them in my studio. We had a lot of fun with these guys. Um, they've all remained when I see them, which isn't very often because a lot of them have moved away. They're all buds now. Rockin' Don Owens with Duck Rouse driving on keyboards. Bobby Myron, master of a million one-liners. And Matt Vouse, who I do believe he lives out here in Souk. Uh, doesn't, now what year did we do this? How are they going to do it to me? 96. Wow. 96. So this is 24 years old. And in a tragedy, when I moved out of the sea of shit, all of the CDs that I had, that I had recorded, disappeared. And so I don't have this. So I'm glad to get another copy of it for a buck. Then we go to the Souk Resource Center thrift store. Now, I love this place because not only are they, are they really nice people, their CDs are the unbelievable bargain of 35 cents. And so for 35 cents, I'll buy a sealed copy of Pink Martini's Hey Eugene. Because when I'm in the mood, I like these guys. When I'm not in the mood, I don't. They're a little bit tacky, a little bit, you know, 2007. This isn't really what I think. T for Two featuring Jimmy Scott. I didn't even notice that. I would have bought it just for that. 35 cents. Linda Ronstant doing Lush Life. This is a good record of hers, um, if you want to hear her voice. Nelson Riddle arranges and conducts it. George Weisenberg. Now, this is after all of her big successes, and she decided she was going to quit wasting her time singing this dreadful pop music and get into some classic stuff. And sadly, it was kind of the beginning of the end for her. This is a very old CD, Made in West Germany by Polygram. So this is probably an original issue. 84. Hmm. I can't remember the last time I heard this, but I remember it was quite enjoyable. Uh, then we have stuff that's, you know, Tchaikovsky, first piano concerto by Ivo Pogorlik, who was a great, I do believe he's Serbian. Back in the day, he was called Yugoslav. And I do believe he was um, controversial because he had an affair with his piano teacher who was, needless to say, female and much older than him. He is a great pianist. Claudio Abado is a great conductor. You could... I can't believe you're going to find a better version of this out there for 35 cents. Certainly not. Um, we have Gimmel. Now, Gimmel, I don't know a lot about Gimmel records or CDs, but I'll tell you this. They sure make a lot of early music CDs. 
And this appears to be music feature on the South Bank show. I don't know what the South Bank show is, but it has Allegri's Misere, which is everywhere. Tudor Church Music by Thomas Tallis, William Byrd, John Taverner, and a guy named William Cornish, who I've not heard of. And Flemish Polyphony by Clemens Non Papa and I can't pronounce his name, Hoskin Dupre. All of you uh, classical music scholars out there can have a good laugh at my expense, because I can't pronounce some of these names. Then we come to, now this was something, 35 cents. Now, I'm, I'm running into a problem lately with artists that I admire for their music, but despise because of their personal lives. And adding to the very short list that includes Roy Estrada and Philip Pickett, you must add the now mercifully dead Elizabeth Schwarzkopf, who just recently I heard a nasty rumor. Well, let's not put too fine a point on this. She fucked Joe Goebbels, and that's just, it's no good. Having said, and it's Joe Strauss II. So we got... This appears to be two separate albums. Now, Schwarzkopf is really good. A great, great, great singer. Really good for anything German. Uh, compact Disc 1, Ein Night in Venetig. What does that mean? Tell me what this means. Oh, it's a, it looks to be a operetta by Mr. Johann Strauss. It sure looks like to me. Now, is the whole thing this? It is. Weiner Brut. Weiner Nation. Okay, well, again, I didn't even look at this. I just said, it's got the booklet. It's 35 cents. What do you want? Uh, okay, these two recordings form a part of a series that almost 50 years ago set new standards for the presentation of Vienna Nini's operetta on one playing records. Walter Legge has his hand in this, of course. Okay, so what do we got here? We have. I'm still not really sure what I've even got here. This happens, you know. I'll buy it. I'll go, what the fuck did I actually buy? One night in. What is Venedig? I don't know. At any rate. Oh, it's Venice. Okay, Venedig. Good, thank you. Sometimes I just don't get these things straight. And these, this is a double CD of. That operetta. Okay, fair enough. So this will be lighter than meringue, but done about as well as you can get it done. And finally, the Empress told me that I should maybe check Fields out because they had, she thought they had more of the amazing etc. stuff that I found there recently. She was half right. There was one I missed, a guy named Bart Spahn, Dutch composer, Oh, there it goes. There it goes. The list is down. Uh, the Barton Workshop, a piece called Zone. And then there's a piece called Clockwork, Bart Spawn on Electronics. Sponsored to the yin-yang by a million different things in Holland. Oh, it's the Dutch Composer Series. Who knew? Two bucks. Again, I'll buy anything on a setter for two bucks. There you go. What did, what did, we, what did we actually spend today? Let's just see here. Four, one... Three, four, five. That's two bucks, four bucks, six bucks, eight bucks. Eighteen dollars I spent today. Not bad. That'll buy you one CD. For 16 titles. Not bad. There you have it. One more successful thrift store troll. Now all I gotta do is listen to them all. And that's it for the old Lusitania. Boy, oh boy, we're gonna have to turn you off. And, yeah, oh boy. Titanic's down by the head. Anyway, thank you for watching. I'll, uh, I got stuff cooking away in the back burner that I'll be able to present when I've done sufficient research to actually sound like I know what I'm talking about, unlike this stuff, which is still a work in progress. But, um, yeah, that'll, that's it for today's adventure. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification button. Don't forget to wear your mask right now. It's uh, more important than ever.
try to be nice to everybody and if you see anybody making a scene because they don't want to wear a mask tell them to go fuck themselves um thanks and uh we'll talk to you later